Right now, though, we're going to talk about Benghazi because our guest, Walid Shobat, who claims, and he probably is, and I believe he is, he's a former member of the Muslim Brotherhood, former member of the PLO. Walid has been on the show before. He says that the leaked photos and the released emails show that the Clintons are in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. He wrote the article with uh, uh, his good friend Ben Barak. It's an exclusive to Shobot.com. And apparently I'm the only one in the United States of America who will have him on my program because we are truth tellers on the Savage Nation. We go where the truth lies. You like that one? We go where the truth lies not to make sure that we lie about the truth. Waleed Shubat, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Thank you for having me. Waleed, this is a big story. You claim that the Benghazi email chain, which I, I saw, we all saw this last week, we were shocked to see from Ben Rhodes that it was as clear as a bell that they were lying about Benghazi. But on the list of those who received it was a man named Mehdi al-Hassani. You claim he's a member of the Brotherhood, correct? Absolutely, yes, correct. And what role does he play in the, in the Obama administration? Well, let's take the case. There's one, not only him, not only Mahdi al-Hassani. Uh, there was five Muslims, in fact, recipient. I've only investigated one. You have Sharon Ahmed, who also known as Sharon Erdkamp Ahmed. You have Salman Ahmed. You have Aisha Sabr, who's Susan Rice's subordinate and the U.S. You know, representative to the United Nations. Then you have Mahdi Khan al-Hassani, Al -Hassan, who's the man we're speaking about. So I decided just to investigate one out of all of them and find out. Al-Hassani was a leader in the Muslim Student Association, which is a Muslim Brotherhood front group. Al-Hassani's affiliation with Islamist groups, the proof is found in a document published by the Islamic Institute of Boston. The, the document is entitled Participants at the Citizen Dialogue Group. One of the participants of this U.S. State Department initiative is none other than Mahdi al-Hassani. On his bio, he states that he is a student. He was a student of the George Washington University, who was president of the Muslim Student Association from 2005 and 2006. Of course, these guys become interns, just like you know, the assistant to Hillary Clinton, Huma Abedin. They love to become interns in the White House. They apply to become interns. Hold on, Waleed, you just, you just mentioned something in passing. Hillary Clinton's executive assistant was the wife of Anthony Weiner in New York, correct? Absolutely, yes. Are they still, is she still the wife of Anthony Weiner despite his uh, sexual uh, problems? Yes, of course, she publicly forgave him, you know, but uh, the question is, why is she allowed to marry him in the first place? That's, That's what I'm door. asking. If, she, if she's a devout Muslim, why did she marry a Jewish man to begin with? How, how is that? What was that about? Well, most Americans do not view the Arabic of what comes out of the Muslim Brotherhood. The number one spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood is none other than Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi, who in his thesis, it's a huge thesis, that began in 1989 in the U.S., working with other Islamists in the U.S., to create what they call Islamic Muruna. Muruna means stealth. And in this stealth, the definition of Muruna is to sanction prohibitions. And one of the prohibitions they sanctioned is a Muslim woman marrying a Jew or marrying a Christian for the sake of advancement of the Muslim Brotherhood causes. Now, oh, my God. Behold, wait, wait, her... Walid, I've got to absorb this, and I do this for a living. You are alleging on this national show, The Savage Nation, that Hillary Clinton's assistant uh i forget her name honestly i forget her name i don't carry it around yeah. is is actually a double agent well she has to be because not only she was involved in the muslim minority affairs with her father and her mother she was she was basically uh doing the newsletter for them in the magazine and so on and so forth but her brother also was involved and also sits as an employee working with none as other than the spiritual head of the Muslim Brotherhood, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi. We established this from court documents from Great Britain, uh, in which he sits in the, uh, in the major university, uh, the Oxford. Uh, um, um, Hillary's assistant, Abedin, her father, was he a bigwig in the Muslim Brotherhood? 
not such a big wig only. He was one of 25 who constructed the entire manual that was issued by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Wahhabists, and how to infiltrate and why we must destroy the, uh, the non-Muslim countries, especially in the U.S. And speaking about the U.S., they had a special injunction there that the U.S. is basically occupied by Jewish Zionists and how to destroy the Zionists. They're their biggest problem. And the, this is all established, I showed even, from the manual themselves. You know, from, it, it was even uh, approved by the king of Saudi Arabia at that time. And he was so wait, wait, I got, I got to let, let my audience follow you, Walid. I can follow you because I've had you on before and I've read your website, Shubat.com. You are saying, amongst other things, that the leaked email about Benghazi is a smoking gun uh, email because on the chain of those who received it is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood who works for whom? Who does Mehdi al-Hassani work for? Well, it is, you know, he, he, what we do know, he was the president of the Muslim Student Association. Who he works for, we do not know. There's st still mysteries involved in this man. But he well, why would Ben Rhodes, why would Ben Rhodes, high up inside the Obama administration, uh, special assistant to of the Office of the Chief of Staff, National Security Council staff, why would he include this unknown man, Mehdi al-Hassani, in a, in a very sensitive email? What do you think that's about? Well, he works for the president. He's a consultant for the president. And so he, you know, legally receives this email. Uh, but the common theme between the Muslim Brotherhood and the Obama administration is to basically begin to uh, undermine the First Amendment and to focus on the issue of blaspheming Islam by using the film and saying that all these problems that we have, even in Benghazi, even in Egypt, is really regarding the film and that we need to basically establish and tighten the rules of basically insulting Islam. That's the whole thing. I mean, the theme of Obama, what he's doing, even going to Egypt from, you know, his own history, going there and allowing the Muslim Brotherhood to be, you know, observant of his speech, and giving the green light for the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, caused the victory of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. It was none other than Barack Obama who wrote his speech. It was a Muslim, Rashad al Hussein. Rashad al Hussein is known with checkered past as well, being you know, affiliate with Muslim Brotherhood operatives and being sympathetic to terrorists. Uh, Waleed, can you explain this to me and my audience, Waleed? Shortly after the Muslim Brotherhood was overthrown by the Egyptian military, the Obama administration took the side of the Muslim Brotherhood, and none other than the turncoat lunatic John McCain went to Egypt and lectured the Egyptian people that they should restore the Muslim Brotherhood. Can you explain what John McCain's role is, is in all of this? That's very difficult to explain, because John McCain is a Republican. He's supposed to be conservative. That I do not know. It's very difficult. You, can, you guess is be as good as, as good as mine. My, 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 guess is that, my guess is that he's brain damaged and that he doesn't even know what he's talking about. And somebody told him, oh, John, go over there, Senator, and tell them to respect democracy, that they elected the head of the Muslim Brotherhood, and that's what's important is the election. Not the results of the election, but what's important is the election. The very same people who say that what's important is the election and the process don't seem to respect what's going on in Ukraine because that's a result of the overthrow of a duly elected president, isn't it? Well, that's very possible. You know, I, I, I only could study the Middle East and tell you what goes on in the White House when I see Islamic names being copied into these emails. And that's usually always an Islamist infiltration in the White House, which, you know, I know Bachman brought this issue up, and she was condemned for it. You bring this issue up. I bring this issue up. We're basically ignored because nobody wants to insult Islam. Nobody wants to basically look into the president himself. Remember, the email came, must have been ordered by the president. It couldn't have been ordered by anybody else. It you mean the, the email that came from Ben Rhodes after Benghazi, September 14, 2012, said this. Here are our goals. One, to convey that the United States is doing everything that we can to protect our people and facilities abroad. Two, to underscore that these protests are rooted in an Internet video and not a broader failure of policy. Three, to show that we will be resolute in bringing people who harm Americans to justice and standing steadfast through these protests. And finally, four, to reinforce the president and administration's strength and steadiness in dealing with difficult challenges. It sounds like a bad movie script, Waleed. <laughs> but let's look at the facts. The facts state that the State Department, CIA officials, and the reporters have explained within 24 hours after the Benghazi attack. They explained what? 
They explained that it was a terrorist attack, a planned terrorist attack. The FBI was already dispatched. The background briefly by the State Department on September 12th reiterated that this was a coordinated attack. The CIA, in whatever version of talking points, also generated the same issue and never mentioned any video. Then all of a sudden, the story changed. So we know the CIA is innocent, even though that they blame the CIA for the, the misinformation. So we know that, this, that the truth have changed. We know Ansar al-Sharia was involved. In fact, even the Libyan government have captured a few of these terrorists and linked them to Ansar al-Sharia in Egypt. So it was a cover-up also for Ansar al-Sharia, which is connected to the Muslim Brotherhood, you know, in Egypt, Mohammed Mursi. Uh, and so if we go back, we understand what happened. It could have been a botched attempt to kidnap the Americans. And in fact, even Mohammed Mursi himself, prior to the Benghazi attack, began to demand the U.S. for the release of the blind sheikh uh, of the first attempt of the attack of the, on, the, on the building in New York. So we... Waleed, Waleed, people would ask, you are an Arab, is that correct? Yes. Okay, you were originally, you were born and, and raised in the Muslim traditions, as a Muslim rather? Yes, memorized most of the Quran. And you were a member of the PLO, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. You are now a devout Christian who tries to save Christians around the world. Is that all true? Absolutely true. No matter how much they try to attack me, I still exist just like you. You know, the, C the CNN tried to attack me. Everybody tried to attack my past. It's impossible to do so. In fact, I'm not fully Arab. I'm half American. My mother was basically abducted for 30-some years living in the Middle East, couldn't make her journey back until I became Christian in 1994. Then I ended up rescuing my own mother. So I have a personal history that shows the suffering of an American woman. And most Americans don't realize the problem. You know, in 55 some Muslim countries, none of them are signatory to the Hague Convention, which is the message to the girls. If you have a Muslim boyfriend and you decide to get married with him and he takes you to any country like Libya, Iraq, Egypt, you can kiss your country goodbye. He has the right by Sharia law in those countries to keep you against your will. And we have a major infiltration in this country. It's in our backyard, Michael. It's in our backyard. It's in our government. It's in our FBI. It's everywhere. Just looking at this one man, Al Hassani. He's, you know, he's been involved in the Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center, which was, by the way, uh, founded by Abdul Rahman Al Amudi, a known terrorist. And by the way, Tsar Naev, the 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 bombers, the pressure cooker bombers. They used yeah, to yeah. Let, let, hold on. Now, this is very important. You are telling us in your article that the Fort Hood jihadist, uh, Major Nidal Hassan. You are telling us that the Sonoff brothers. You are telling us that that these terrorist events in this country on our soil, that have occurred under the watch of uh, the, this president. Uh, you're telling us that they're related to the Islamic centers? Absolutely. The, you know, Tsar Naev attends the same mosque as Al-Hassani, founded by Abdul Rahman al amudi who is a known terrorist. And not Waleed, only we're gonna, Waleed, this is amazing. You're tying so many things together. Your main premise is that the leaked photos from last week and the released emails show that Clintons are in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. What you're saying deserves the attention of the world We'll come back right here on the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. If anyone cares to ask Waleed a question or challenge his allegations, 855-407-282. We'll be right back. It is 55 minutes after the hour. We're talking about uh, a very shocking allegation that the leaked email from last week about Benghazi, according to our guest Waleed Shobat, shows that the Clintons are in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. He also goes further and alleges that there are at least six known members of the Muslim Brotherhood who have penetrated our government. They have completely Sharia-ized our FBI and all of our government institutions who will not even look at radical Islamists in this country. That is how the Sonoff brothers got away with plotting and planning the Boston Marathon bombing. They were on the radar. They were being looked at by the, the Homeland Security, FBI, etc., and who did nothing because they were Muslims. Waleed, is that what you're saying, more or less? Uh, Waleed, welcome back to the program. Waleed? Yes. You can, that's Waleed, right. are you saying that the, that the Boston Marathon bombing could have been stopped if our intelligence agencies had interacted before they set off those uh, pressure cooker bombs? 
Well, yes. I mean, if you look at an interview with FBI Director Robert Mueller, he was asked during the congressional hearing if he knew that the ISB, which is the mosque, was founded by Al Amudi, which, by the way, Al Hassani also attends. I, I think we need to continue this into the next hour. Well, Lita, I hope you can be with us because there's no more important uh, issue than survival itself. And if what you are saying is true, and I have no reason to doubt you because I don't speak Arabic and you do, then America needs to listen to Walid Shabbat and the Savage Nation. Our guest, Walid Shabbat, former member of the Muslim Brotherhood and the PLO, says that according to the released smoking gun email from last week on Benghazi, he claims the Clintons are in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. It's, it's an alarming statement for a couple of reasons, because if it's true, it should cancel Hillary Clinton's plans for the White House. And if it's not true, it's a tremendous allegation that could cause my guest a great deal of trouble. So let's go back to Waleed Shobat. Waleed, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Have the, have the Clintons or anyone else tried to shut you up? Uh, well, you know, I had even the movie maker who made the movie, Innocence of Muslims, call me. How would he know my number? is bizarre because no one knows my private number Wait a minute, you mean the, the man who made the internet video that hillary blamed for the benghazi event called you absolutely i have it in recording michael i have it in recording why did he call me here's why he called me the reason he called me was because he is an fbi agent himself in fact this case is proven from the court documents in 2009 he was arrested and he was about to get sentenced heavily for his methamphetamine business, in which the methamphetamine was sold to Hezbollah. His recruiter was none other than my first cousin, Iyad Salome. And I begin to blow the whistle on the whole issue. The, the reason the FBI gave him, asked the judge for leniency, was because he was supposedly to catch his recruiter, my first cousin, and they gave him the leniency. And when my cousin was caught in Canada, the Peel police contacted me. And I have the emails to prove that as well. They contacted me asking to see why the FBI is refusing to take the man they've been looking for all this time, my cousin, who was a recruiter of Nakula, Basil Nakula. And it behooves me why the FBI never accepted him from Canada. He was finally sent on a plane courtesy of the Canadian government, to Palestine. And what Nakula wanted me to do was basically to stop blowing the whistle on this whole issue. So we know for sure even the movie maker collaborated with the FBI. So the question becomes is what's the whole thing about the movie and what is the FBI's connections to the movie? Of course, the FBI denies everything, even as I was trying to say when Robert Mueller was asked about the same mosque that Al-Hassani attends, the same mosque that Abdul Rahman Al Amudi founded, the same mosque Bassam Istwani was involved in heavily, who Bassam Istwani is, was major with the Clinton administration. We have a litany of evidence on Istwani in the whole circle of this whole Islamic infiltration. Okay, so your main allegation uh, continues to, to, to march along, which is that the radical Islamists have penetrated this administration, but it goes back even further. I want to read a paragraph from Shubat.com. You write this, if you've ever found yourself scratching your head at the disinterest of Republicans when it comes to the Muslim Brotherhood, consider that Estwani also met with the most powerful member of the House of Representatives at the time, Speaker Dennis Hastert. You then go on and say, Hastert's successor, John Boehner, has shown a propensity for either ignoring or helping the Brotherhood. He defended Aberdeen in the face of overwhelming evidence that she's connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. Senator Marco Rubio and Rep. Mike Rogers did as well. Boehner has avoided appointing a select committee to look into Benghazi. That's changed, hasn't it? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure if it's changed, but uh, we know for sure that the Stwani and the whole group was very much... Well, no, it has. Boehner said that he wants to appoint a select committee. I'm saying he is apparently going to... Uh, he's Somebody pushed Boehner into appointing the select committee on Benghazi, uh, well, he, to, be, uh, to be fair to the issue. Yes, correct. Yes, I misunderstood you. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying you were wrong when you wrote that. It was correct. But how did you take a middle of, how did someone take a middle of the road to like Boehner, who doesn't want to rock the boat? How did he decide to look into Benghazi? <laughs> That's difficult. It could have been because of 
elections coming. It could be the Republicans want to find something on Obama and the Clintons. But the, the, let's, let's be honest, the garbage goes even before Obama. You know, you had Bush uh, also dealt with the same uh, personnel, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. You want to so hear something, lead? Both of us are, are creative thinkers and we're able to exercise our minds. So let's run our minds for the audience right now. My feeling, my fear rather, the Democrats, because I read today that Pelosi has decided to cooperate with the Benghazi committee. She wants Democrats on the committee. Suddenly she's not going to boycott it. That's because they've decided they're going to undermine the entire Benghazi uh, hearing. They're going to get through discovery, every email that would be exposed, so they know what's coming in advance. You want to hear my bet? I'll bet that because they have better lawyers and they're more vicious, they will turn the Benghazi hearings on the Republicans. Do you think that's a possibility, Waleed? Yes, it is a possibility, of course. Uh, they have much better lawyers. They have the media. They have CNN. They have uh, BBC. They have everything on their hand. And, of course, they also uh, you know, tout Obama as the, the best thing to slice bread. You know, it's no secret that the media has always collaborated with the current administration, and that's going to be the status quo. It's going to be... Why, why is the media so blind to the radical Islamists amongst us? Well, the answer is very simple. It's because the liberal agenda has a lot in common with the Islamist agenda, and that is to thwart and to basically undermine the Judeo-Christian heritage. And the only way to do that is by undermining the First Amendment. This is the whole thing behind the movie, is the First Amendment. You cannot say anything against Islam, Muslims, and so on and so forth, which is exactly what we're doing. It's to silence. The, the, the American people silence them, put them in a corner, and accept the status quo. And they find, you know, you, you look at the environmentalists. I mean, the Islamists agree with environmentalists, the Big Bang Theory. Islam teaches Big Bang Theory. Islam doesn't believe that uh, life begins at the moment of conception, unlike us. Uh, Islam believes in social uh, activity. In fact, Islam has ishtirakiya al islamiyah which means Islamic socialism. So socialism and, 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 and the liberal movement and the Islamists have a lot in common. This is why you see them uh, swearing on the Quran. This is why you see Keith Ellison with a liberal agenda. And you show me one Islamist in this country who's not for the liberal agenda. So, and the Islamists use these, you know, uh, uh, what do you call idiots, uh, basically because the Muslim Brotherhood agenda itself states. So the, the Islamists use the useful idiots called Democrat socialists for their own end. And you're arguing that the Democrat quislings and the Republican rhinos are selling us all out to Islamic Sharia, jihad. Is that what you're saying? Basically, yes. I mean, it's exactly what we see. The facts prove it. The facts from the beginning prove it. The facts from Obama's speech in Cairo, what is going on in Syria, blaming Bashar al-Assad for everything under the sun in Syria. Bashar al-Assad, sure, he's a dictator. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you feel about Al Gore, one of the biggest liars in the history of the world, in my opinion, who's made fortune upon fortune with the big lie of global warming, sold his network, which was a failure, to ena enable Al Jazeera to penetrate the American mind through the media. How do you feel about Al Gore doing that? You know, that's a very interesting question. I have one time tried to track and trace Al Gore's environmental statements about Islam. I found the exact quotes he gives about Islam and environmentalism, the exact quotes, came from Abdullah Omar Nasif, who he attended his speeches. Abdullah Omar Nasif was the boss of Huma Abedin and the Abedin family. Abdullah Omar Nasif is an Islamist, Wahhabist. The same quotes Al Gore uses for environmentalism and Islam comes from Abdullah Omar Nasif. They should tell us something, that the liberal movement, when they examine Islam, they find a lot in commonality. Why would he be using the same quotes from Abdullah Omar Nasif, who's known to have supported terrorism financially, who's known to have been a Wahhabist, part of the Saudi institution, who's known to have recruited the Abedin family in the U.S. and been their boss, and is officially listed on their Muslim minority affairs, an agenda that is designed to infiltrate everything from the government to the... Uh, uh, all right, all right, well, let's bring it down to current events on the National Savage Nation show. The Muslim jihadist leader in Africa says, I abducted your girls, I will sell them in the marketplace. We learned today that the Obama administration has agreed to send American special forces, I believe, I don't know what, to rescue the girls. What do you think that's about? Well, of course, Obama wants to basically elevate his image. He does those kind of things, like Osama bin Laden, 
But the question is, is he being honest to the American people about the rest of the agenda? And that is, he really does work very closely with his family. He works with his uncle, Saeed Obama. And in fact, Al Jazeera Television did an interview with a member of his family, his first cousin, Musa Ismail Obama, in which he disclosed that the uncle, Saeed Obama, communicates with the president. He's the only conduit in the family that sends back and forth the well, here's the you all eat upon me, but look at the headline just came out. U.S. is preparing to send a military team to Nigeria to help rescue nearly 300 schoolgirls. By the way, they're Christians abducted last month and another eight more kidnapped last night by vicious Boko Haram militants whose leader Abu Dhaka Shekau threatens by Allah. I will sell them in the marketplace into slavery and marriages. So Obama's doing the right thing for political reasons. Yes, but he is doing the right thing, isn't he? Yes, of course, but what's he doing in Syria? What about the Christians in Syria that's being slaughtered by Islamists? What about the Armenians? What about Kesab? What about his link with the Turkish government? What about okaying the Turkish government to basically attack Kesab in Syria? We need to look at the foreign policy here. What is going on in Syria is tantamount to really uh, deception and betrayal of the Christians of the whole Middle East. Their numbers are dwindling every day. Why yes. are we supporting Islamist movements? Why? Well, I don't know. John McCain wants to send the Islamists uh, in, the, in Syria weapons. Everywhere you turn, John McCain wants to support Islamists. You know, one last note, Waleed, when uh, Gaddafi in Libya was captured before he was brought to, before he was executed, he warned America and the West, he said, if you get rid of me, my nation of Libya will descend into chaos. It will become a state like Somalia run by warlords. You'll wish that you didn't kill me. Then Hillary goes and says, we, we came, we saw he died, and chuckles over it with the four horsewomen of the apocalypse. Why was Hillary Clinton so anxious to kill, or, or whoever it was, to get rid of Gaddafi? Why was he not given a trial? Well, get rid of Gaddafi is the same thing of getting rid of Hosni Mubarak, is the same thing of getting rid of Saddam Hussein, is the same thing of getting rid of Bashar al-Assad. And that is to pit Shia against Sunni and to cause, basically, civil war in all these regions. That's exactly what we see. We see the same situation in Iraq. We see the same situation in Libya. We see the same situation, much worse, in Syria. We see the situation in Egypt. But, in fact, the Egyptian people said enough is enough, thwarted the Muslim Brotherhood out. They are in Turkey. Of course, we support Turkey. And Turkey has its incursions into Syria. Turkey. Waleed, Waleed, I'm sorry. What has to happen? What has to happen? for Americans to wake up to the takeover of their country creeping shari- by creeping Sharia. Can anything stop this tide? Well, you know, that's a very interesting question. I think, to be honest, to answer the question is to say that the only way a sleeping giant like the U.S. could wake up is through a death toll. You have to have a major death toll. Once it is, a, you know, 9-11, 3,000, that wasn't enough. It needs to be a major death toll until people wake up. Disasters is the only way. It's the only inoculation, Michael, to wake people up to the situation at hand. We see it in Benghazi. We see it in the Middle East. We see it at the forefront. We see it in our military. You have Islamists in the military, chaplains in the military, anti-Semites, you know, major Muslim figures who's part of the Muslim... Unbelievable. Well, look, we're running out of time. We're going to keep our lead till the end of the hour, which isn't too long from now. We're going to take one or two questions when we come back. For Walid Shubat, go to his website, shoebot.com. Make up your own mind. See if what you heard thus far on today's Savage Nation is total alarmism or total realism. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Joy. Well, radical Islam is in the news. The news story is that the U.S. is sending, it says a team. I guess it's not a basketball team. They're not sending... Uh, basketball team that's sending a team to Nigeria to rescue 300 Christian schoolgirls stolen last month by a radical Muslim leader of Boko Haram. And I guess the team will consist of American military men, not women. I'm sure it'll be men, fighting men from America who will go in. And they're not a basketball team to rescue these girls who uh, has been kidnapped by this guy who says, by Allah, notice Fox originally said by God, uh, Waleed Shobat, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Can I get him back up? I don't even know what line it was. Li- Waleed, welcome to the... Waleed? I'm right here. Why do you think the media said that they said, by God, I will sell them in the marketplace into slavery instead of by Allah? He said Allah, the Boko Haram man. He wouldn't say by God. 
Of course, the media has to cover the issue that uh, God is and Allah are equivalently the same. They're not the same. Allah so, Waleed, would you say that the media has been um, made safe for Sharia or Shariaized already? Well, of course. I mean, you look at the media. What you know, Bill Clinton. He wants to cover up oral sex he had. What does he do? He attacks what Kosovo. You know the story. And yeah. oh God, don't re oh God, yes, he bombed Serbia. He br blew up every bridge on the on, on the Danube. He stole Kosovo from the Serbs, all to cover up a sex scandal. Waleed, before we go, your website is shubat.com. Please speak to the audience in Arabic. We love to hear you in your native tongue. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ana atakallam al lughat al arabiyyat al fasiha wa aqulu lakum. Ana Barack Obama laysa kama huwa yadda'i. Barack Obama wa a'ilatahu kullahum min al islamiyin. Good God. Even I understood a few of those words. It's like listening to someone speak German and nodding along, even though you don't know the language, the way Obama did last week, making believe he understood Merkel. Waleed Shubat, keep up the good work, and God bless you, and thank you very much for being with us.